you know, you know, Kevin, you get busy, you start doing one thing and then you start doing another thing. And if you don't have something to remind you that it's time to start making your calls, it's very easy to skip it. Welcome to the No Excuse Pro Podcast, your weekly dose of motivation and actionable advice. If you're a realtor, financial planner, business owner, or anyone who's tired of making excuses and ready to take your success to the next level, you've come to the right place. Join your host, Kevin Briarton, each week as he chats with industry leaders who are going beyond the excuses to achieve their goals. So no excuses accepted. Let's get started. Hey, Irene, thanks for jumping on the No Excuse Pro podcast with me. Um, I know just a little bit of background about you. You've been a coach for a number of years, and so I know just enough to be dangerous. So tell me a little bit about your journey and tell me a little bit about what you do. Yes, so I am a coach for loan officers, and I've been doing that for 12 years now with the Freedom Club, Carl White. We started it together, and uh, it's been a fun, fun journey. And about, about five years ago, I noticed that there were a lot of teams that had loan partners and they didn't have time to train them. So I, as I was coaching people, I noticed that. So I started a training company four years ago for the staff of loan partners. I'm so, sorry, the staff of loan officers. And um, it started out just for loan partners, you know, like the loan assistants, but it ended up being anybody that can come to the class and um, and learn how to wow clients and referral partners. And so it's been really fun. Now we have three other, two other classes as well. So we have three total. That's awesome. Well, I know we've had a, you know, there's a big why behind there because I think what happens right now is, you know, a lot of people are, you know, want success in their life and they, maybe they do a dream board or, you know, vision cast and build it all out the right way with your right intentions. But then there's all these excuses that get in the way. So what have you found with training loan partners? The whole point of training the team around so is so that the engine of the uh, business building can continue to grow without the excuses. So how have you seen what you do relate to allowing the the teams that you service and the uh, companies you service on the mortgage side continue that process of prospecting and at not having excuses? Yeah, what I've noticed and the reason we started it is so that people could get out and not have an excuse, right? Because we, if we think we have to train the team, if we think we have to do certain things, we're not going to get out and get business. Loan officers will not, many will not go out and get business if they know that they can't leave their team to handle things. They, they are, it's their baby, right? The loan business is their baby. They, they conceived it, they bore it, they, nurtured it. They've done everything they can for their business. And so it's really hard for many people to let go. But if you have an amazing loan partner that is trained, that knows how to wow people, that has really good experience in the loan business, then it's not so hard to make the excuse that you have to stay in the office and work on the loans because you have other people there to help you. And what was happening is a lot of loan officers were not having trained teams because they didn't have time to train them. Either they didn't have time to train them or they didn't want to train them or that just wasn't their thing. And they weren't thinking of the things that they could be trained in. So if they have a trained team, then they have no excuse not to get out and go get the business. Yeah. So one thing that I love, I heard, actually I better flip this on the right color. So I just saw this little guy on another call and I was like, oh, this is awesome. For our realtors and financial advisors watching, this is a little chess timer um, holding it. me accountable to make sure I'm doing prospecting time. Prospecting time is really important. And, and when you come down to come down to it, we all have other responsibilities. We're not here, we're not living to work. Let's just be honest. Sometimes we we feel like that because we this gives us a lot of pride and ownership. We love it. But the reality is there's other things that we're doing and we're doing work for other reasons, like being having a family, being able to pay the bills, having a roof over our head. Those are really the essential things. And what I really am getting into is being very focused on what's essential and what's non-essential. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading a book around it by Meg, Greg McCowan. And it's it's absolutely got me thinking a lot about staying in that green time. And this chess timer is something that's super simple 
that allows you just to make sure you're thinking, okay, well, what am I doing? Am I doing the things that are helping me grow to serve my family and the my team? Or am I sitting here messing around with, you know, doing something that really is not moving the needle? So I just want to share that with you. I just heard that the other day. And I was like, I love this. So I ordered it on Amazon and it was like 18 bucks and um, <laughs> really, really cool way to keep this in front of your mind because here you go train all these people, then you have no excuses. And then we still find excuses. So I think you got to have little tricks of the trade to hold yourself accountable to get over those excuses. And so you, um, what is the one problem in your field? Let's say in coaching field, uh, mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be in, you know, uh, mortgage specifically, but maybe relating to realtors too. What's mm -hmm. the one problem in your field that you're trying to solve and help teams with? It's training them number one, so that they don't have an excuse but as a coach, it's giving them tools to help them stay accountable. So one of those tools is when they come in in the morning, they have a specific amount of time that they're going to do their outbound phone calls or write their handwritten notes, those types of things that are green time, right? It's the time that they're really building relationships and um, getting more business in the door as well. They're asking for referrals. They're getting business in the door. And so in order for them to stay accountable to that green time, so to speak, they are making sure they're putting it in their calendar. And then I have them, one of the little tricks that I like to use is to have them set an alarm on their phone that goes off every day, Monday through Friday or whatever days they work. It's automatic and it has a different ringtone than any other alarm that they have, whether it's, they could put on music, they could put on something that gets them all pumped up. They could just have it be an alarm. But Every day, 15 minutes before they're supposed to make their calls or do their green time, that is when that alarm goes off and it reminds them, oh, you know, it kind of jolts them. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm in the middle of this other stuff. I got to get ready to, to make my calls. And yeah. then five minutes before they're supposed to do it, another alarm goes off to remind them because, you know, you know, Kevin, you get busy, you start doing one thing and then you start doing another thing. And if you don't have something to remind you, that it's time to start making your calls, it's very easy to skip it. Well, and, and I had one the other day. I mean, I actually use, I use the focus uh, option on my phone and it pops up and it, it changes. The whole color of my phone changes. It locks out apps and it just says, this is the time to make, you know, proactive outbound outreach. I love uh, I that. I was interviewing a agent that was awesome. Episode, I believe it's episode two with Jason Penrose. Oh my gosh, this, he, he, it was so, it was very simple. Uh, it was called plan. Uh -huh. So prospect lead appointment negotiation. And it is our obligation to our team and our family and our community to prospect. And what I found the other, uh, just recently was I had a situation where I was trying to got something got on my head and I'm like, no, I got to reach out to my database and follow up and had amazing follow-up check-ins, ended up helping a few people from that that really needed my help. And I just started thinking about it. Like, what if I didn't do that and I didn't actually have the out, outbound outreach to um, help these families and serve them even more? The other thing too, on the flip side of that, our realtor partners really need help. So I was able to help connect them with a realtor partner and mm -hmm. help both the family and the realtor partner based on these calls. And it reminded me how important it is to, to do this. I'm not just doing this to be green, you know, oh, it's just green time. It's what I should be doing. And then I feel like I should be doing it. No, I actually feel like I truly should be doing it because of, of why. And that phone reminder reminds me, I have people to serve and go help. And, and now's the time to do it. And if I put it off, I'm, I'm big on, um, you know, just like uh, the planner I have when by noon, I'm big on doing it before noon. Mm -hmm. It's extremely important. So what is the biggest challenge that um, your, your partners right now are mainly realtor partners you help, but what are the, what is the biggest challenge? This is going out to mostly realtor partners. What is the biggest challenge your customers are facing when it comes to realtor partners? Like what challenges are realtors having in this market right now? And how are lenders helping them solve that? Yeah, there's, they're having some major challenges. A lot of realtors are, uh, there's been a lack of inventory. The rates went up, everything. It was the perfect storm, right? Of everything. But what the, what I've seen a lot of lenders do is their number, the number one thing they're doing is being a listening 
sounding board to them because sometimes, you know, they get so frustrated that they just need someone to listen to them, someone to let them vent and get it out of their system. And if, and if a lender can do that, a true friend, they can be a true friend to them. That's a relationship. Yeah. And that makes a big difference. I've seen a lot of lenders do that. The other thing is they'll provide them with things. Um, they'll give them tools, things that they, they, there's a lot of lenders that have a lot of knowledge about things on social media, a, a lot of tools that they can help realtors to help grow their business if the realtor wants them to. And that is another thing that I've seen them do. Uh, tools that help the realtor, just like one of the things is I have one right now in another part of the country that is actually doing calls every day with the realtors on a Zoom meeting. They're getting together with their favorite realtors. It's this one lender and she's getting together with her favorite realtors on Zoom. They're all on there and they're making calls at the same time. So they spend the first 15 minutes visiting and talking about their wins. What were their wins from yesterday? What were their wins from the morning? And then they, they all mute themselves and they stay on Zoom so everybody can catch the vision of everybody making the phone calls and they hold each other accountable. So and then at the a end- plug for what you're, you guys do at the Freedom Club and Mortgage Marketing Animals. I have to tell you, I mean, I did call stars for about a year straight. And I mean, it's a game changer, um, holding yourself accountable to other people in the industry. And, it's, and that's uh, two different sessions, you know, twice a day, East Coast, West Coast. And doing it in a format like that, and I love the idea of doing it with your realtor partners as well, and doing it in a format where, hey, jump on, you can either do it with a contract or not a contract. I did it with a little bit of a contract saying, hold my feet to the fire, and, and it made a big difference. It made a huge difference in my success, my team. I was able to help hold people together because of what I did. Yes. So that, I love that idea. So what uh, the challenge I've had, um, you know, a lot of times people don't want to be held accountable. They want it. They want it. They, they talk, they, they say they want to be held accountable until you actually hold them accountable. And, you know, I see that play out uh, from time to time. So how do you do that in a cool way where you're not making them feel bad, but you want to help them because you know, it's right for what they're supposed, what they want to do with their, um, their dreams and their aspirations. So this one that I'm talking about, she has, handpicked the ones that she thought would enjoy it the most, the ones that have told her that they really need to make phone calls, but they never get around to it. So they're more committed to doing it. So what she's done is she started with them and then she's going to add more people. If people start dropping off, she'll add more people and she'll add as many as want to, but she really can't, she doesn't really want to hold them accountable like a coach does, yeah. but she just explains to them how it's helped her business. And they see that her business has exploded since she started doing call stars every day. Cool. And so cool. they see they see the results and they see what she's doing and then they just automatically want to do it. But I, I wouldn't try to hold them accountable like a coach would because then it kind of gets a little bit, you know, yeah. like you're showing that you're better than them. You're not, you know, you're. it's better to do it together. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's awesome. And, you know, I think the the thing for us, you mentioned just be there as a support mechanism you know, that's really, we're in this together, you know, yes. whether it's whatever, whether it's different lenders in the industry and you need to have somebody to go to, that's going to help you with more than just, Hey, can I get a prequel done? Like it needs to be a partnership. It needs to be more of a friendship. It needs to be a connection that really like you can lean on him. Hey, I'm having a tough day. Can I just call you and invent or hey, I'm a tough day with this situation. Can I just run it by you? I know you're not the lender or I know you're not the realtor, but I really need your support on this. That's the type of community that I think it's really important to have. And if realtors or even financial advisors don't have that, um, people outside of the industry, a lot of times people have people inside of the industry mm -hmm. that of their own industry, this respective industry. But I think outside the industry gives you a different perspective on what it is, because there's principles in everything we do. There's principles like um, do want to uh, others, how you want to be, uh, you know, what you want to be on to you. And, and I, and like, make sure you treat people how you want to be treated. Um, and if you give, if you give, you're going to receive, and there's basics that, that are fundamental principles in mm -hmm. every industry. And so you can learn from what other people are doing. It doesn't have to be just in your industry. 
So on, on the no excuse philosophy, what's the number one recurring problem that frustrates you every day? And I know you've honed this in. So maybe there's nothing that frustrates you. Oh, but, there's there's plenty uh, of things for everybody. What is the number one thing that frustrates you right now? <laughs> and what are you doing about it? You mean frustrates me in general or in my business or? Um, let's, let's go professional first. Okay. The number one thing that, that frustrates me the most as a coach is when people don't feel like they're, um, capable every day where they, they feel bad about themselves. They look down upon themselves because they're not performing the way they feel like they should be performing. And so that's where I take my tools and try to work with how they look at themselves and things. But the frustration part is that I know that they are so special. I can see what they have inside of them and they're not able to see it. That's frustrating to me, but we have tools to help with that. And so that's also where I, I shine the most it, as far as in my heart, where I feel like in my heart, that's where I shine the most is being able to help people feel better about themselves because they are so amazing and they just don't always see it. And that boils down to our self-talk, right? How we, how we look at ourselves, how we talk to ourselves. That's the thing that I love doing the most, but it is the most frustrating mm -hmm. as a coach when I see that. The other thing that's frustrating to me um, as a, as as a trainer is that not enough people know about our training company. That is the most frustrating thing to me. And so I'm working bit by bit now. Um, I'm coaching less people so that I can focus on my training business and building that up. So that's another thing that's frustrating to me is not getting the word out there enough about our training company. You know, your training, whether it's mortgage or real estate, because I've Plenty of realtors probably need a training like yours to yes. help them get out of the you know minutia of the business and do more uh, prospecting. Uh, so so in that vein, so not just necessarily mortgage. Um, have you found it as a challenge where people go through your training and then go back to whatever company they're working with and then find that maybe the company doesn't jive with their thought process and and how do you overcome that? So most of the people uh, so far in the last four years, all of the people that have sent people to the training have known what the training is about and it has jived when they get back. But there is some lack of follow-up sometimes. You know, it's easy to drift. You can learn something, you can be all excited about it and you can actually learn it from A to Z. And then when you get back to the office, you know, old habits start creeping in. And if the loan officer who sent them to the training or the real estate agent, whoever sent them to the training, if they don't keep up on it a little bit and talk about it once in a while, it's easy to drift. So that's what I try to do is remind loan officers, you know, you get the workbook, you get a full workbook of everything that they learned. And it's good to bring up different subjects that they learned once in a while, just to refresh their memory and make sure that they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, an old principle from, I was listening to an old call from Mike Ferry, great coach in real estate. And he's just like, one of the things you should do, foundational things you should do is review um, your scripting. And I, you know, yes. I know a lot of people go, I don't want to be scripted. I just want to be me. Well, the scripting allows you to be, be uh, effective in that conversation, also known as design conversations by our friend, Steve. Yes. Kyles. And so- I think that's really important. I've talked to a lot of real young realtors recently that want to push away from the scripting because they're like, well, I just want to be authentic. But what I found, and maybe you could talk to this, is the scripting allows you to work within a framework and be targeted in your messaging with some maybe some flexibility around it. Help me out. Help me like what did people struggled with or had wins with um, with with scripting? Scripting is so amazing. I like to call it dialogues, mm -hmm. scripting, whatever you want to call it. But it gives you, like you said, it gives you the framework for what you're going to say. And then you can put your own personality into it. Yeah. So you can have a specific script that works. And we have a lot of them in our coaching program. We have specific things that work, but you can still take it and make it your own. If, if the script is you're so awesome and you don't use the word awesome, don't use the word awesome, use amazing or some other word that you like to use. If you 
say things a certain way, use the way you say them within the dialogue. And you're still getting the same message across, but you're doing it in a way that's, it's your way of talking. Yeah. Yeah. It's important because I've had people where they get hung up on like the exact wording of it. And it's like, yes. you know, it's more about the idea of it. And I, I'm actually big on just using scripting because I, otherwise it can get too far off. The scripting opens a door. It's not a yes. conversation. The scripting is just like, the, the entrance, like, hi, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Nice to meet you. And then, then you have a conversation. Like, yes. it's okay to have the dialogue at the beginning to open the door. And that's how I view it. But one thing I've changed right now is I'm, I've really been every day, 15, 20 minutes, like this old Mike Ferry uh, call he had on years ago was just review your scripting every day, 15 minutes a day. What am I going to do? And the best thing about that is it's and what are you doing today to intentionally set yourself up for your mindset about okay this is what i'm doing today you know if you're a realtor calling expired listings let's review this script if i'm calling for sale by owners let's review the script if i'm calling my database let's review the script and it just gets you your mind going so i think the challenge with a lot of us in whatever sales capacity you're working on real estate financial advising coaching is you got to get the the motion going forward. So what I find with scripting is at least it, it gets that motion going and the momentum going, mm -hmm. and then I'm right into it. I like to start with birthday calls. My database knows that uh, friends and family, I do birthday calls and I love doing it because it's like fun and lighthearted. And, and then if I have to make tougher calls, then you know I do that after. So that's one trick that I use. I like that. Have a little fun with it first, you know, and, uh, and, it's okay. You know, I, 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 it works. And so have, have fun with whatever you're doing. Yes. So you gotta have to fun. This, yeah. Uh, with the scripting drive time, but I want to make sure I don't take too long, but you know, what, 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 anything more on scripting that comes to mind? The only thing with scripting is I'm going to say the same thing you did. I, it, I admonish the people I coach to read their scripting every single morning, read. I don't care how many times they've done it, read through it and build relationships. That's what this is all about. It's about, helping people. It's about building relationships. And don't be afraid to ask for referrals, to ask for introductions to people that they know that could use your help. That is that is the difference maker. All of those calls and scripts include asking for referrals or asking for introductions to people that they know that you can help. If you don't do that part of it, people think, oh, Kevin's so successful. They're not thinking this consciously, but in their mind, in the back of their mind, they're, they're just imagining that Kevin is so successful. He doesn't need my referrals. And he's not sitting there thinking, does Kevin need my referrals today? Man, I wonder if Kevin Briarton needs my referrals. They're not thinking that. They're too busy thinking about their own lives. So you just need to let them know that you are looking for their referrals. That's the biggest piece of advice that I could give anyone on your podcast today is make sure people know you are looking for their referrals and that you appreciate them. And if you don't ask, they don't know that you're looking. They just look at you as being successful and, and they're not, it's not on their radar. Something that I have been asked my database recently about, and if you're a realtor listening, you can use this as well. Um, if you had to sell your house in one day for top dollar, who is the realtor you would call? And even if somebody is your friend and they, um, maybe you're recruiting realtors and you were building out a team, maybe you're wanting to find out if there's somebody that, you know, there's, that's in their life that, you know, I'm using this to really have organic conversations around meeting people that I know, like, and trust that also know, like, and trust other people that I need to connect with. And, you know, I had an awesome meeting just this week with somebody that, has a couple lender relationships. She's in a different city than I am. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's some, there's a nice synergy that because the other lenders are, are pretty far away from where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So it actually works, but you know what, whether I get business from, I've got to a point where I have to have organic real relationships to fill me up inside. And I don't know what it is about it, but whether I get business from her or not, the meeting was super meaningful because I truly connected with somebody that was connected to somebody I've done business with for a long time. And it meant a lot to me. And like, I don't know where the relationship's going to go and I might not get any business from it, but I can tell you, I got a lot of energy from it and that's going to continue to go on to help more people and 
you know, we had some awesome collaboration and, and I shared the podcast with her. So hopefully she'll listen to this one as well. But I don't, how do you handle like everything's trying, everybody tries to be intentional with everything, but sometimes that intentionality gets so focused that we lose who we are. So I want you to, in the last couple of minutes, I want you to talk about some tools that people can use to still be who they are as a person, but also be a no excuse pro. Wow. Um, I think they have to hold themselves accountable. And the way they do that is to, I'm big on self-talk. You know that about me already. I'm big on changing your programming that you grew up with or that you've had in the past. Who you were before doesn't necessarily have to be who you are. So you don't you don't need to use that as an excuse. And it's very easy to use our past as our excuse. Oh, I've I've never been good at that, or I'm not really good with that anymore, or that type of thing. So the way to stop giving yourself excuses is to change how you look at things, to change what you're saying to yourself. That's really, really important to do that. So if you say, Kevin, I am not good at following my morning routine. I'm not good at making sure I make my phone calls every day. And if you, if we keep telling ourselves that, that's what we're going to keep doing, right? And I have a tendency to tell myself, one of the things that I'm working on is I can't remember names all the time. I remember faces, but not names. And I look at myself and I say, Irene, when are you going to stop saying that to yourself? Let's mm -hmm. change that dialogue in your mind so you can change that about yourself. And we'll start to remember names if you'll change that. So mm -hmm. think about what you say and say the opposite. And then every day be intentional about saying the new self-talk to yourself. So I am amazing at remember names. I always remember names. I am great at remembering people's names. If I say that to myself over and over and over again, which I'm working on, then eventually I will start remembering names and I'll find ways. The brain will help you find ways to make that happen. If you will program yourself that way, it really is programming. That's so cool. Yeah. It's uh, I'm reading, I'm uh, I do two affirmations right now morning and I think it's important, you know, just to be aware of where your shortfalls are and then build an affirmation around it. Yes. Um, you know, that sometimes that's, you know, just the opposite, you know, inverting it, right? Like what if the opposite was true? I'm bad at, I mean, we talked about this before, but it's like, I'm bad at, you know, looking at, you know, knowing, knowing names. Okay. Well, what if the opposite was true? I'm good at, okay, well, let's just say that over and over. I, this stuff works. I, yes. uh, that's a whole nother conversation. I think that self-talk is extremely, extremely important. And that self-talk goes into the scripting because, your self-talk, getting your mindset right, but then scripting, getting your mindset right of what you're going to say and why you're doing it and then going into it uh, is is a whole, whole nother episode. But, oh man, Irene, it's been a pleasure, you know, ha having you in my life with um, meeting you through the Mortgage Art Marketing Animals and Freedom Club. Freedom Club, and, and uh, if everybody listening doesn't know, Freedom Club is really uh, a principal coaching platform where, you know, the foundation is to create freedom in your life and to be able to provide more to your family, community, uh, and your team. And by doing systematic uh, efforts and a daily success plan. So if you want to learn more about the daily success plan and coaching, Irene, how would they get a hold of you? They can reach me by um, reaching out to Irene at the Marketing Animals. That is my email address and I'd be happy to talk to them and we'll get them set up with someone that can really tell them about it. It's an amazing program and I'm honored to be a part of it. And I'm grateful to have known you for these years, Kevin, of being a, a member of the Freedom Club and just being able to, we're close in area too, since I live in Chandler and it's been awesome to get to know you and see what a great um you're a hard charger, like you go for it and you make it happen. And I'm so proud of you for that. And you've changed your self-talk and you've just really worked on yourself. And I've been able to witness that. And I just appreciate that about you. You guys have made a big impact. I think there's a lot of, um, you know, financial advisors and realtors out there that really need some principles around the Freedom, the Freedom Club principles as well. And so I'm going to keep bringing this valuable content. So thank you so much for everybody for listening to the No Excuse Pro podcast another episode of how do we break through these excuses, obtain our dreams and our goals, um, but also not jeopardize maybe our life in the, in the meantime and our family in the meantime. So 
Irene, thanks again so much for being on and we'll, we'll catch you on the next one, everybody. And uh, have an awesome week. Take care. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for having me. And there you have it, folks. Another enlightening episode of the No Excuse Pro podcast is in the books. A heartfelt thank you to today's guests for sharing their wisdom and to you, our valued listeners, for spending your time with us. If you're ready to ditch the excuses and level up, make sure to subscribe and find all our episodes at noexcusepropodcast.com. Don't forget, the only thing standing between you and your goals is the story you tell yourself. So no excuses accepted here. Take action and make it happen.